Uh, thank you all for joining us here for this gallery talk with uh, artist Lynn Ruff. Um, for those of you who don't know, she is originally from Kansas and she moved to the Coastal Bend in 1985 and she's been coming to Rockport since the 90s and officially moved here in 2006. I first met Lynn when she took a class with me here at the Rockport Center <laughs> of the Arts in the Blue Building. Um, she won't believe this, but I actually really enjoy her as a student. Uh, she's a very fun student, but she's very stubborn. <laughs> is what makes her work so great uh, because she has a very clear like emphatic voice you know immediately that this is a Lynn Ruff painting and even though this show has a lot of different styles like compositions and subject matters it all feels very cohesive because it is spoken from Lynn Ruff's voice so uh, with that I'm going to turn it over to her she's going to give a little talk about her work <laughs> Those of you who know me, I love to tell stories. And this was an extreme effort on my part of painting for a year and a half to get you all together so I can tell you my story. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my background comes from the fact that my mother and my paternal grandmother were both artists. And my paternal grandmother um, lived in a great big, kind of elegant farmhouse, the kind you could send off for a kit back in the old days, but it was one with the better woodwork. <laughs> and she had these, she had studied in Kentucky and come to Kansas in a wagon. This is dating us all. And um, she, I don't know if the big paintings she did were done there or they were. Um, done after she got to Kansas, but there were these huge, huge paintings that had, that were like um, Greek scenes and, and bath scenes, everyone was clothed, but they were <laughs> bath scenes and they had these giant gold frames on them, which is really kind of interesting for a woman who went and milked the cows, gathered up all the eggs, made her own butter, fed all the harvest hands that came to her table. Sometimes there would be like 15. And uh, she was just kind of an amazing character. And my mother was more of a graphic artist. Back in probably the late 30s, newspapers would still feature drawings of things they wanted to sell. They didn't have that many photographs. So she drew dresses and china patterns and that sort of thing. So I was, I was around it all the time. It influenced me. And um, I think I started art when I was seven at Wilma Wethington's School of Art in Wichita, Kansas. <laughs> and happily I checked the internet and there's still some Wilma Wethington, Wethington's uh, paintings around. Oh, so I thought that was kind of neat. I would describe myself as an abstract expressionist that has a short memory. <laughs> um, a short attention span because almost every painting in here started out as an abstract. And then all of a sudden other things started popping up. And I've painted the ladies in turbans for years. They have been, this is probably more of a tighter painting than I've usually done with them. I don't know who they are. They're either tribal or biblical, but the only painting um, that I have that has four women in it is this one. And after I finished it, I realized I'm the old lady who's sitting down. <laughs> And that was kind of a surprise. So uh, the materials I use are um, a lot of paper, um, acrylic paint. Um, sometimes I use pastels. And um, it's just whatever's handy, really. And that has been true from the very first painting. I think the first painting I ever had hung anywhere for somebody else to look at was at K-State and I still have that painting and I could have probably snuck it in here and it wouldn't look that different and it, it had tissue paper in it and I think I'm not even sure did we have oils 
in 1963, I mean, we had oils, yeah. but I mean, do, did we have acrylics? Yes. yes. Well, I wasn't yes. aware of them, and they weren't being used at where I went to school. So those are the materials. Sometimes the technique that I use, I will put a color on, and I won't like what it's doing, and I will take it into the shower and scrub it. And you will notice on some of the paintings that there is that feeling that there's more of a translucent. You might notice it on the duck painting. And um, also for me, the painting technique is almost like weaving. You'll pull a color through and then you'll pull another color through. Or you'll pull a shape through and you'll pull another shape through. Um, I was worried when you walked in here if you would say to yourself who are the 16 people who painted all of this you know and it was a big surprise to me when i got it all hung that it really looked like the same person had painted it i don't know if that was your experience or not i've had a lot of neat connections because of this show and the first one i have to say there's, um, there's a painting over there with green teal on the top of it. That painting is really important to me for a lot of reasons, but when I took it off the wall, I found a letter. And the letter had been to my father. It's at least, the painting's at least 30 years old. And it was, something that I must have retrieved after he passed away. And it really, where's Anita? Come here. <laughs> yes. Not to put you on the spot. Yeah, really. <coughs> Anita Diebel had taken that painting, I don't think I was very sure of myself at that point in time, and hung it at the very front of the old art center. So when on I- On the feature wall. On the feature wall. So when I walked in, I was just blown away. And the whole evening was magical. And you don't remember the painting, do I you? Do. You do I now? Do. And yes. it was just magical. And she gave me a name tag that said Lynn Ruff Artist. Yes. <laughs> and I went home and I wore it on my pajamas. <laughs> That was a wonderful connection. But it was the member's show, and this painting just stood out, so, no. as all your work does. Thank you. So. Thanks. Um, you don't have to go away. <laughs> <laughs> Another experience that I had was I took one of the cards. Um, one of my instructors, uh, I'm trying to, oh, Mark Anderson, who, who was at Corpus Christi, and he was a head of the art department. And he went, from there I believe he went to be the head of the art department at Baylor. And I was taking lithography, lithography from him, and it was the only class I got a B in. I didn't want to lift those big stones, and I didn't want to mess with the chemicals, and I was not enthusiastic at all, but I loved him. And I went into his office one day and I said, I'm just so discouraged, I don't have any time to paint. And he looked me straight in the eye and he said, Lynn, there will be time. So I took the card for this show and I wrote on there, you said there'd be time and there was. And I, you know, you can almost, if you look through enough obituaries, you can almost find anybody that's still alive by the fact who they were related to. So I sent, I found him in Robinson, Texas, and I sent it to him, and <laughs> yeah, tell me, tell me, what did you get back? He immediately wrote an email that says, oh my God, I remember Lynn Ruff. I'm so proud of her, I'm so excited that she does this show. And so I sent him the whole catalog so we could see everything that he made. That's me. <laughs> Thank you, so that was, that was one, and then the third thing is I sort of reconnected with my college roommate who had, um, who was also an art major, and that was a special gift. So the show has brought me a lot of connections. Um, also, there was a muse for me besides all of this, and the muse was 
an artist named Audrey Flatt. And she started out as, and I had never heard of her, because I don't know very much about um, people who are like a little bit ahead of me, of my generation. I think she's about 94. And um, I, I found this little book at an estate sale, and in the book she said, when an artist walks into the studio, they bring with them all their teachers and their history and their friends and their families and their critics. And if they keep painting, slowly but surely, each one of those people walks out. And if they continue to paint, the artist walks out. And what that really means is you're out of your head and you're in the zone. And that's just the most special place. Doesn't happen all the time, doesn't happen with every painting, but that's one of the most special places that you can be when you're doing art. Um, I just, she, she was an abstract photo, she went from abstract to photo realism. And even, and do you know what photo realism is? It's just like reality. But even the way she took the pictures, like an apple or a lipstick or whatever, it was all put together in a real abstract form. So I just found that to be real interesting. And if you are curious about her, and I don't know how you can retrieve it on your TV, but she has a wonderful documentary. And it's about her life and it's about the art. So I would recommend that you check it out. I want to thank everybody here for coming. And I want to thank my buddy over there. And she said, she, the way she described our relationship in our first classes was really generous. Because <laughs> we really didn't get along very well. But we have had so much fun on this show. We really, we really have enjoyed each other's company. And I want to thank the, the Art Center in general and I want to thank my husband for letting me drag paint all over our house. We live in a little house, and I could never call the art room my studio because it just seems too dinky. So my studio went all over, and um, I appreciate you all coming. This is fun. Can you tell us about Muriel? Well, I, I, the story of, there's a, pic, a painting on that wall called Muriel the Triumphant. And this is such a long story that if you really want to hear the whole story, you have to take me to lunch. <laughs> but I will tell you that she was an entertainer and she uh, entertained in front of the king and queen that would be Elizabeth's parents, I'm thinking. And with uh, Tallulah Bankhead, who was notorious. And um, Muriel was just as notorious. She hung out with F. Scott Fitzgerald and his wife Zelda. In fact, Zelda wrote a short story about her that was pretty incriminating. And, <laughs> and she just came along, I was eight years old, and I needed a swimming teacher. And my mother was very fragile, and here came this woman, probably in her 50s then, though I painted her like she was young. And she represented to me that you can be, it's okay to be a little tough. And I needed that, and I, I truly believe that God will put people in front of us that aren't necessarily appropriate, <laughs> but will, move us on to a, a, a different point. And she ended up, she had a husband, Bob, and they were scheduled to go on Broadway with the estate, with Fred Astaire and his sister Adele. And Bob was lured away from her um, by a tobacco heiress who bought him liquor and books. 
And so this is right after the crash in 29. Muriel sued that woman and got $40,000. Now you figure out what $40,000 is worth back then. So that's just a little bit of the story. What the, the unique thing about it is that she had told me a story about humiliation. I don't know if you want to film this or not. She had told, she had told me this story. She said, Lynn, if you ever walk in a room and your dress blows up in your face and you forgot to wear your underpants, just pull it down and keep on walking. <laughs> well, at eight years of age, I could not imagine <laughs> not wearing my underpants. So in 2010, I got curious. I realized, I woke up one day and I thought, she went through some humiliation. And I got in contact with the library in Las Vegas and they, had, they said they had tapes about her because I knew she lived out there. Her husband had, uh, her second husband, who I knew, had played uh, piano for the Dorsey brothers and everybody that was out in Las Vegas. And so they were gonna send me the tapes of her life and um, they disintegrated and I didn't get them. But I did a lot of investigating and I, and I found out that that suing the woman and not being able to go on Broadway with Fred Astaire and you know that was her humiliation but she was just explaining it to me in a way that would hit an eight-year-old girl <laughs> i thank you all for coming we're done here aren't we <laughs>